All right, just going to do a video showing that Jesus Christ himself actually rebukes the cultic, unscriptural Roman Catholic papacy. Just going to show several scriptures where, because the Catholic Church loves saying, well, we were founded by Jesus Christ. Well, in a sense, they're right, because the Jesus of Roman Catholicism is not the Jesus Christ of God's word. See, Rome's Christ is not the Christ of the scriptures. So they are correct when they say that Christ started Roman Catholicism because their false Christ did indeed start the Catholic Church. But the Jesus Christ of God's word has nothing to do with Roman Catholicism. So... There's that whole factor, but here's some scriptures where the biblical Jesus Christ actually refutes and rebukes the Roman Catholic papacy. First of all, Jesus Christ clearly condemned using the term father as a religious title. Matthew chapter 23, verse 8 to 10. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. That simple. Now, the Catholics will obviously retort and say, well, you call your parents mother and father, so what's the big deal? Uh, you read the context there, he's referring to religious titles. You know, rabbi, master, okay? Those are religious titles. And he's saying to not use father as a religious title, because why? One's your father in heaven. It's referring to God the Father there. Same thing when the Pope calls himself Holy Father. That term only appears once in Scripture, John chapter 17, verse 11, and it's referring to God the Father. But you see, the popes are just a bunch of blasphemous Satanists who, t who basically steal God's titles and give it to themselves. Next point is that Jesus Christ rebukes the unscriptural cult-like authority of the Catholic Church and the Catholic papacy that it displays. Uh, Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 to 28. Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 to 28. But Jesus called them unto him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be minister un ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Okay, But what do the popes do? They exercise dominion and lordship over the flock. But what does Jesus Christ say? That's what the kings do, but it shall not be that way among you. He's talking to, to his disciples there. So Jesus Christ himself directly rebukes and reproves the Roman Catholic papacy. Here's another example where Jesus Christ refutes the Roman Catholic heresy that only the church leaders have some kind of special access to God that regular saints don't. Luke chapter 9, verse 49 to 50. Luke chapter 9, verse 49 to 50. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not he that is not against us is for us. Okay, what's going on there? Well, like I said, the man casting out devils in the name of Jesus was allowed to simply was allowed simply to do so because he was a believer. Okay, the apostles tried to forbid him from doing so because he wasn't following Jesus Christ around like they were. But Jesus Christ corrects them and told them that the man was not against them. He was still for them. He was still a believer in Jesus Christ. It made no difference. What's going on there? Well, he didn't. He, the, the apostles did not have some kind of special kind of papal type of, of what do they call it, magisterium or whatever, or, or infallibility that other saints don't have. Church leaders don't have some kind of special access to God that regular saints don't have. But in the Catholic Church, this is what goes on. Only the church can read and interpret the scriptures, and the regular laity can't. But Jesus Christ rebukes that in this passage there. Finally, Jesus Christ rebukes the Catholic papacy's attempt of outwardly showing religiosity via their fancy robes and clergy outfits. Luke chapter 20, verse 46 to 47. Oh, and by the way, doing that is also what the Pharisees did as well. So Roman Catholic priests are just modern-day Pharisees when you get down to the facts of the matter. Luke chapter 20, verse 46 to 47. Beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes and love greetings in the markets and the highest seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses and for a show and make long prayers, the same shall receive greater damnation. Hmm, make long prayers. Kind of sounds like what you have at the Catholic monasteries where they just chant their same, their Hail Marys and other things over and over again. Yeah, they're Pharisees. That's what all they are. They walk in long robes. They love to have these greetings and this adoration, just like the Pharisees. See, these Catholic, the Catholic papacy are the spiritual descendants of the Pharisees. It's that simple. So th that's just some examples of Jesus Christ rebuking the cultism of the Roman Catholic papacy. See, like I said, Jesus, the Jesus of Roman Catholicism did indeed start the Catholic Church, but like I said, Rome's Christ is not the Christ of God's word. 
Rome's Christ is a false Christ. The Christ of God's word has nothing to do with Romanism. So anyway, don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.